I am experimenting with the encaustic medium or the waxing process. And I'm using two different types of substrates. I'm using a plywood that is covered with encaustic gesso. That is the brown and gold pieces. And I am utilizing watercolor paper that is glued to the piece of plywood. On both, I use a different type of paint. I use watercolor for the blue and yellow on the watercolor paper, and I am using pan pastels for the plywood coated with the encaustic gesso. So it's very interesting to see how the two reacted differently. Both reacted well, and both got me to the finished project. So so let's just get to it, and I'll let you decide what you like better. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Cosmics Media. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe. I try to give you videos that are quick and to the point. That notification bell will let you know when I upload additional content. So to get started with the encaustic medium, you can do two things. You can use the beeswax and that uh, resin and mix those together to create the encaustic medium by the encaustic medium pellets. The soy wax is used to clean your brushes. And this is the encaustic gesso. And these are encaustic paints or the encaustic medium with color infused. So I bought the starter kit, the encaustic starter kit. These are the natural bristle brushes. My setup is just a griddle. I purchased it at a, a big box store and I have the soy wax in one pan. That's to clean my brushes when I finish. The other pan I will fill with the encaustic medium. And I'm just going to put some in a little tin can and pour it, pour it there because I've already turned the skillet on. You want to keep the heat right at 200 degrees. If you get any higher, it will start smoking. And from what I understand, that smoke can be toxic. As you're using your brushes, you'll want to lay them on your griddle and keep them warm. Otherwise, that paint will get rigid inside the brushes. I'm also using the pan pastels to color with. I had my husband cut me five inch by seven inch pieces of plywood. This is just cheap plywood. And I'm gonna coat that up with the encaustic medium. So this is the first uh, project that I'm doing is the uh, browns or the um, encaustic medium on the plywood. And we'll do the uh, watercolor paper a little later. So just stay with me and we'll get through this. So this is the three that are coated with the encaustic medium. You can see that my resin is, or my resin and beeswax mix, or the encaustic medium is starting to melt. Now, once melted, we can start putting the, putting the uh, wax on, but you wanna heat and get that dry. So I'm just drawing that encaustic medium on there. Now I've just illustrated with a charcoal pencil or a Stabilo awl is what I utilize. So to draw on the boards, I use the Stabilo awl and just a regular pen, just a big pen, you know, <laughs> that you would buy to, to write with. So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing over the top crazy. So that's where we're starting is just with that little sketch. And, you know, I should have edited this out. I'm answering a, a text message, but there you have it. And I'm just gonna dot, draw some dots on the upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna scribble a little bit. And this is kind of um, a representation of something that I have seen. Um, I've put that away. I watched a video quite a while ago and there was someone that was kind of doing this left-handed and I thought it was pretty, pretty neat. So I'm just trying to emulate that. I don't even remember where I saw it. I didn't save the video, so I can't tell you where I got this inspiration to do the scribble effect. But now I'm just dotting some of the uh, gray grayish brown, um, 
pan pastel on there. And just spreading it around with my finger. And I'm, I'm just utilizing my finger as, as my paintbrush. And once I get that laid down, this is a, I call it a grayish brown. They, this, pan pastels, I, I don't see a color written on them. I think I, I might have thrown the paper away that had the colors. So I'm sorry, I will link below what I purchased and we can maybe look up those colors a little bit later and I'll add them with a text uh, overlay on this screen. I also have some gold that I'm utilizing there. So I'm kind of liking how that color is laying down. I'm going back with my charcoal or my Stabilo All and adding a, a little more gold a little more scribble. And now I think I'm ready to um, get into position to add some wax. Now I want to heat the board first. I've found that that is very important to heat your substrate before you add the wax to it. So I'm just going over that with my heat gun. My wax is melted and I'm just going to brush that wax over the top. Very simple. And now to fuse it. And from my understanding and from everything I've read and everything I've watched, you fuse until you see the wax turn clear. And once it's clear, it signifies that it is fused and you can move on. But you want to fuse between each layer. So now I'm adding some darker brown on to just give some definition and um, shadow effect to the edge. And we'll get the color on that we like, and then we will come back with yet another layer of wax, and, and we'll fuse a little bit. I wanted to kind of get that wax fused in there, and now I'm laying that down. I was afraid that I would move that color if I didn't just fuse it a bit before I put another, another layer on. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with how that's looking thus far. And it has a real um, smooth finish. You know, everything is kind of um, all one level, if you will. You know, that plywood had a tendency to be kind of rush, rough, and the wax has just really mellowed that out or evened that out. And now I'm just drawing again. And then with my left hand, non-dominant hand, doing the scribble down my, my stabilo with a regular pen. And I have decided that I'm going to encase some paper in here. Now, the first one I did, I encased a feather, um, and I can give you pictures of that if you'd like to see it. But this is going to just kind of rest over the top of that little square that I drew. And the paper, when you put the wax to it, like we do when we, you know, use candle wax or, or use anything that we're trying to make transparent, the wax will make that paper transparent. So you'll be able to see what I illustrated underneath that paper. So, you know, I mean, if you can, you know, you're, it's kind of an endless thought process of what we could actually do with this. I tried to make this very simple because I am very, very new to this. This is my first attempt at utilizing this medium. I'm just warming that up. And now I'm going to add a thin layer of wax and lay my paper down on top of that. I'm going to 
diffuse it just a little bit. And get that fused in and while it's still warm I'm going to lay the paper on top of it put another piece of paper over it run my brayer over the top to get that wax or get that paper kind of embedded into that wax and now I'll just take my brush and go over the top of it and that now is encased in the wax and you can see see the little square that I had drawn um, underneath the paper And I decided to do the same thing over here. So we'll take that script stamped, stamp and stamp on this little torn circle. And we'll do the same thing over on the other side. I'm just getting that encased in the wax. And we'll fuse it. And I think we're good to go. So I'd like to come back. I'm taking just a little, um, it's a tool that you use for sculpting clay or for sculpting. And I am just making some marks in the wax. And I lightly fused it. I don't want to, I don't want it to close back up on itself. But I'm just mark making here. And now I am just painting around the outside edge of that. And I will go back <clears throat> and add a sheet of scrapbooking paper or um, something on the, on the back to kind of finish off the back. And I think that gives it kind of a a nice look with that black edge around it. I'm just cleaning, cleaning my brushes, dipping them in the soy wax and setting them aside. But I've decided to come back and do more, so we'll have to clean those again. And I'm just making marks in the wax again. Okay, so now let's work with a piece of watercolor paper. So I am going to fill up my resin again. I had, had uh, let everything cool down and that's why I was able to pull that pan off. So I've cut a piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and I am just gluing it to the top of that piece of plywood. And I am going to kind of do the same process. I'm going to color or kind of scribble with my Stabilo. and my ink pen and I'm going to use watercolor paint I'm just cleaning my brush off all of my pants so I'm starting with just a, a gray a light gray And I will come back with a blue. And I'm heating that up. Adding a little water to get that paint to run a little bit.
And once I'm happy with the way that looks, we will coat it with a coat of wax. And I really personally think that I like the watercolor paper better than the encaustic gesso painted on the board. And I did not put the gesso on my watercolor paper. Perhaps I should have, but I did not. And I did not run into any issues. So I am liking this one a lot better than the first. And I've decided to add a sentiment to this one. And I just am cutting out, I have some typed up and I'm just cutting that out and putting it along the bottom and I wind up messing that up. And um, the nice thing about wax is when you mess it up, you can just scrape it off and start over. So it's a very forgiving medium and I had made some lines here and I was going to just dab some acrylic paint over the top of the lines and I wound up it, it just got messy it it um, started tinting the wax uh, I may have done the acrylic paint when the wax was too warm I'm not exactly sure what happened here but I just wasn't happy with what happened so I went ahead and left it in so you can kind of see how I how I fixed it and I um, put some additional wax on it and I wound up just heating it and pulling that paper off and um, once I had that off I I stamped it but you'll see that here in a minute so I did the same thing with two other colors, yellow and, and gray. So I did the yellow and gray. I'm adding a sentiment on the yellow and gray. Same process. And I just brayered that in. I'm just going to add some wax and we'll fuse it again. So if I learned anything, I learned you must fuse between every layer of wax and get the wax to come to the clear to signify that it has been fused. And I also learned that you can get rid of your mistakes by heating the wax and letting it drip off the side or scraping it off and getting rid of it that way. I didn't want to scrape too hard on this because I had that watercolor paper on there and I was afraid that I would damage that watercolor paper. So I kind of used the heat to get rid of that. So I'm wiping it up with a, a baby wipe and I'm just going to go back and add a little more blue and then I am going to pull that script stamp out and just stamp right down here in that corner and I'm going to stamp in the upper left corner as well just with some jet black ink and once I have that ink on there I will fuse again to make sure that ink is secure and just making some marks And I will ink around the outside edges and hit it one more time with a little bit of heat. And of course, put the acrylic paint on the plywood around the edges as well. So that concludes my very first experiment with encaustic medium. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learn something and you know feel comfortable in using it if i can do it you can do it for sure so these are my finished pieces and how they turned out you can see the um, 
hopefully you can kind of get the glint of that wax and how beautiful it is on top of the piece and the mark making you can see i hope now that you know that it's there you can look for it and, and um, see the marks that are made in the wax i had a lot of fun with this medium and i plan on using it um, more and utilizing it for different things but it just created a, a very interesting afternoon for me and I loved I loved working with it and it's not expensive to get your setup going so I will link everything that I used in the description box below and I hope that you will um, you know give it a shot once again, I call my channel Two Old Crows Multimedia. I hope that you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I try to keep my content quick, concise, and to the point. I have added a couple of other playlists here that I think you might enjoy. I try to upload on Fridays a challenge, Saturdays simple, Sundays a supply of some sort, and a technique on Tuesday. So please come and join me. Thank you for stopping by today. Bye.